have blessed us and enables us to come and uh, join our hearts together to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Thank you. So again, I would like to praise and thank the Lord for the privilege of uh, sharing His Word to us this morning. And uh, for the past 10 days that now I have preached, uh, last, now the last time, we have studied uh, what is the most important pursuit that we should know in our lives. And based on no, our, the truth that the most important person in our lives is God. Amen? God is the most important in our lives. Now, He makes the difference in our lives. And so, because He is the most important in our lives, then the most important pursuit is to love Him. And how do we love Him? To love Him with all of our... How do we love God? We love God with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our soul, with all of our minds, and with all of our strength. That means... No, we should love God above all. No? We should love God above all. Have we experienced loving God above all? More than no? the person around us? Or the things around us? If it is the most important, then there should be nothing in between us and God. Amen? Okay? And so, we've said this, no? I hope that the truth that we have learned now continues to grow in each of our lives. And not to, God, to love God above all. And uh, now, the measure... Of our love to God is to what? To love Him without measure. To love God without measure. And we have said it. Now loving God means not to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We should know Him. We cannot love God without knowing Him. Without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we can know the Lord Jesus Christ. Now when we read His Word daily. There's no knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ apart from His Word. If we depend our knowledge on God on books and experiences, it might not be the real knowledge of God. Okay? And now the real proof of our love for God is our obedience to His Word. And last, not last Sunday that I preached, we have also studied this, that you know, our love for God should be expressed. Just like what the song, you know, we have just sung. We love Him because He first loved us. And we should receive the love of God, and this love should be reciprocated. Okay? So... Uh, 1 John 4, 9, we have stated that you know, as it is manifested, the love of God towards us because that God sent His only begotten Son in the world that we might live through Him. If we'd like to summarize, now the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to us, it is about life. The love of the Lord Jesus Christ is all, is all about the life that God gave us that without his love life will cease life will cease 
And so we have studied how to reciprocate the love of God. No, it's also to love Him. And what is the natural outflow of love is giving. Now, as the saying goes, we cannot give without loving, but now you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. The natural outflow of love is to give. And was that it? That in the Word of God, now there's a command, especially in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17. Now that every man should give as he is able according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. And so we express our love for God according to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17, when we give accordingly. And what else? Now we express our love to God in giving when we give back the Lord's tithes and offering. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, now when we give up the Lord's tithes, the very purpose of the tithe says that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. You will learn to fear the Lord. And I remember uh, with my daily reading, as I read, know how the Lord commanded Abraham to offer Isaac. And after you know, the act of offering Isaac, what, this, what did the Lord said to Abraham? Now I know that you what? Fear God. He was able to sacrifice Isaac because of what? He feared God. Okay? So why we tithes? We give our tithes as we learn to fear and honor God. As we recognize that what we have is His. If you recognize that all that you have belongs to God, then you should honor Him to give him his part. Okay? For it is he that giveth thee, what? The wealth. No? Or the power to get wealth. And now in verse 19, no? For else, if we are not reminded of the fact that everything comes from the Lord, there is the tendency of forgetting him. That means every time we give our tithes, we remember that this belongs to God. And I should give it back to him. Okay? Haggai 2 the, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. In Leviticus, and all the land, whether of the seed of the land, of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. Huh? And must be, what? Set apart to him as holy. So we show our love and fear for God when we, what? Faithfully give our tithes. But not only that. Oh, by the way, when we fail to give our tithes, no? In Malachi, you're cursed with a curse. Okay? Why? Because the Israelites failed to give what's due to God. And indeed, no? the Lord said, you are robbing me. And you are cursed. Now with a curse. So, in the New Testament, okay, we also uh, show our love when we what? No? The principle of sowing and reaping. When we invest rightly. Okay? The, the resources that God gave us. So, no? when we invest wisely, the blessings we receive. And what is the best investment, of course? No? The, best, the best investment is not to use it for no, the expansion of the Lord's kingdom. And... Uh, lastly, no. Uh, as we give, we give. Uh, who decide in giving? It is. Is it our minds? No. It is our hearts. No. You purpose it in your heart, and it should be grudgingly or out of necessity, or what's due or what's required. It should be from your heart. No. For the Lord giveth. For the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. So our giving becomes the expression of our love for him. And we should be careful with us always as we give. That it should express a love for the Lord. And uh, I read no, an article that no, uh, when we give, what God really saw in, in us 
is not what we give or what's left behind in us. Okay, that's why he command no, that widow in giving a mite. Because the Lord said it was all that he, she had. Okay? So, of course, when, when giving is an expression of our love, then no, God saw no, what's the percentage of our love for him no, as we give him. Okay, so uh, the promise in Malachi, the promise that God will bless us, the sources of our income. And the promise also here that God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Okay? And that you may abound in every good work. As the Lord blesses us, God is increasing our capacity and also our opportunity to do good works. Let's remember that. Okay? When God is increasing His resources, entrusted resources to us, that means God is increasing also our capacity and our opportunities of doing good works. Okay? So, love cannot be wasted. It makes difference where it is bestowed. It always brings in big returns. Let's remember that. Okay? So, love cannot be wasted. It makes difference where it is bestowed. It always brings in big returns. And so, this morning, as we continue, we'll study you now that as God loves us, and the result of it is life, you know, we will be reminded, you now what is the impact of that in our lives? And in return, as we love the Lord, what should we do? Because of love. I remember a story of a teacher. No? Uh, he was uh, telling of a story about a student who is so problematic in her class. He would arrive late. He would not participate in the class. And even now his grades is not that good. But one day and onwards, this student comes to school very early. And he would study. He would pay attention. And later, he had the best grade in the class. And so the teacher asked him, why? Why the sudden change? And very simple, the student said, Teacher, it is because I'm in love. Oh. That's what love can do. And so this morning, also, Gakuan ba na ang rilo? No? Maganda, no? <laughs> okay. So, so, we'll study, no? Because of love, what God did in our lives. And because of love, what should we do also in return? And so, no? First, we'll study because God loves me. Romans 5.8, a very, very familiar passage, no? God, Romans 5.8, but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God commendeth or God demonstrated his love. This is how God showed his love to mankind. And what does that? Okay, how God expressed his love? It says there, while we were yet sinners. I really believe that as God first loved us, then we should in return love Him. But if we are, cannot fully understand no, how vast the love of God, how important, how impactful, how purposeful the love of God to us, then many times we take it for granted. We know in our minds that God loves us, 
but not really in our hearts. We're not really learning to love God. It's because our knowledge of the love of God is also too shallow. Okay? So, in order for us to appreciate no, the love of God, then we should know us. And the Word of God calls us sinners. Okay? Sinners. It is seen in us. That's the great problem. Many times, we look at sin very lightly. Okay? That we look at sin as it is the most delightful thing to do. We delight in doing sin. We love doing it. We enjoy sin in our lives. What else? We like to hold on it. We think that's something to keep in our lives. Even hidden in the eyes of men. We care to hold of it in our lives. Anyway, many people don't know it. We keep sin because we think sin is good for us. And we cannot live without it. That we enjoy it in our lives. But you know, it's just all Satan's lies. Why? Because Satan is the father of lies. And he wants to fool us into believing that when we engage in sin, when we do sin, then it brings the light. It makes life to uh, be enjoyable. And we should hold on it. No. It's not. What God saw about sin and that we should be serious about sin is that sin separates us from God. And without separation, it brings miseries, miseries and troubles. You know, this foolishness of Satan in us is now greatly described in Isaiah 53, verse 6. Was that, was, was the, you know, Isaiah 53, 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray, and each of us turned to his own way. We think that what we're doing is good. But the word of God is telling us that it leads us astray. Nangasaag kita. It's not the right way. Because there's a way that seems good to a man. But the end of it is destruction. And many people believe that. And most probably, before we knew the love of God in our lives, the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we also cling to that knowledge. We don't know where it ends. The end of it is destruction. Satan is just fooling us. Okay? God saw that the greatest problem of men is sin. It's not money. That many of us thought that without it, life will cease. We think our work, our prestige, our honor. We think that these things is the most important in the problem of men. My problem is money. That's why I can continue engaging in sin. 
just to have money just to have this because I look at sin as not not really serious as not really my problem but no the Word of God is telling us that the most important problem of men is sin okay Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God no one is righteous okay and Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Every sin that we commit don't have a consequence. Let's always remember that. There is no sin that we commit that has no consequence. Okay? Okay? So, unsamani? Okay. Let's remember that one byproduct of sin is pain. First and foremost, it hurt God seeing man commit sin. No, ato na inum duman kanunay maghimo ganit tasala, especially kita mga anak sa ginoo. No, dili ingon niya murag wala ra na sa Ginoo. God is hurt when people commit sin. Let's always remember that. And not only that, it also brings pain to us. Not only it brings pain to God, but also it brings pain to us. Don't think Na kung mag-commit ka sin, it's enjoyable, no? It always produces pain. And not only pain, it produces shame. Not only sin produces pain, but it produces shame. That results to life's miseries and more miseries and results to more troubles. That math, uh, Roman said, according to Paul, that the sin ends to death. That's why the wages of sin is death. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, many of us start with small sin. But as we keep on doing it, we nurture that sin. That it will continue to grow. And grow and will result some more miseries and troubles that ultimately it will result to death. Okay? So as sinners, this is our condition. Our sins brings us to what eternal judgment. Romans 1 8 and the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by the wickedness. And ultimately in Revelation 21 verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, sexual, immoral, those who practice magic arts, idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake of fire, in the fire lake of burning sulfur, that is the second death. The wages of sin is death. Let's not look on sin lightly, but let's look on sin no, in the eyes of God and what? The Word of God is telling us that it results to hopelessness. We are hopeless because of sin. It separates us from God. By the way, Romans 3.23, no? all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Fall short of the glory of God. We cannot reach God. Because of sin. Sin stands in the way. Sin separates man from God. And that's even in the Garden of Eden. People would say that the result of man's poverty because of the scarcity of food. No, I tell you that Adam and Dev was the only people in that Garden of Eden. But they have to work hard because of sin. 
What's really the cause? Because of the relationship with God. And so man wants to connect with God. But again, man is sinners and you cannot connect with God. You fall short always. Many people try religion, good works, and everything. But again, it falls short of the glory of God. It separates us from God, which is the source no? of life and sa ato po yung mga needs. It brings us more miseries and troubles and lastly it leads us to eternal judgment. And when we think of these things without the love of God, do we have the motivation to live? Even with your present situation, you might be millionaires, you'll be earning millions. But even if you earn millions, you still end up in hell. That's hopeless. That's hopeless. And so, Romans 5.8, But God commended us love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God gives us the solution to man's greatest problem or need, which is sin. Okay? And number one, it's the forgiveness of sin. First Peter 2.24, He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. God, take all of our sins and put it on the Lord Jesus Christ was, uh, while hanging on the cross. The problem called sin, the greatest problem called sin. He take it from me and put it on the Lord Jesus Christ where the Lord Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Luke 24, 46 to 47. And he told them, this is what is written, the Christ will suffer. He died on the cross and rise from the dead on the third day. And what? Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached. Many people will think, how about in the Old Testament? That when they commit sin, they will just kill an animal, a lamb, for the sins. But again, Hebrews would tell us that though the, the priest or the high priest would repeatedly do that, Again and again, it does not cleanse them from their sins. It just covered. But the sins are still there. It's only when the Lord Jesus Christ, once and for all, died on the cross, paid the penalty of our sins, that repentance and forgiveness is available to men. It was made available by the virtue of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only that, there's forgiveness of our salvation. John 3, 16, we all know that. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Ephesians 2, 8, 8, 9, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is what? The gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. And now, after paying the penalty of our sins, if by faith we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is His gift for us. It's not the wage or wages that we have to work. What's the difference with gifts and wages? Or reward? If you work, if you do something, then you'll be rewarded. But gift, no, you're not worthy of it. It was just given. And if something was given, and you will work for it, then, on the other part, if it was a gift, then it's an insult. Or in other words, a gift that is worked for, then it becomes what? A wages. It's not a gift.
This is what the Lord did to us. He offered salvation for free and He gave it freely as a gift that we should not work for it. Titus 3.5, He save us. Not because of what righteous things we have done. Let's remember that. It's not because we're good. For if the basis of our salvation is the good works that we do, then heaven will be full of proud and boastful people. But praise God that it's free. No? Not because of righteous things we have done, but because of what? His mercy. Let's remember that. Because of His mercy, because of His love, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit. He saved us. No, not because of righteous things we have done. Okay? Ephesians 2, 4 and 6. But God who is rich in mercy for His great love hurrying with us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us. Make us alive together with the Lord Jesus Christ. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because of this love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we respond with faith. Now we are so blessed. Even sitting under the not together in heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, God's love no, expressed in giving is man's solution. I like this one. He was born to die that we will live. God's math, no, one cross, three nails, results to forgiven. Isn't it good to know those shameful, painful, that we've done, was all forgiven. For God, no, di natin mahad look, will not be afraid. Someday when we face the Lord, that all those shameful things that we've done will be shown, will be revealed. But God said, it was all forgiven. It was all forgiven. And another thing is this. In Romans 8.32. He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also what? Freely give us all things. Amen. The provision of our needs is all by the grace of God. Okay? And it was attached to what? With the expression of His love that the Lord Jesus Christ died. If the Lord did not spare His only begotten Son, His most treasured, loved, how much more does other things that they're just nothing? He will give us, He will give it to us. So, it also, no, the provision. Sige no. He cares for us, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. You might be here this morning, and, no, you can't feel the love of God, that He cares for you. Go to Him. Go to Him. It might be because of Something that stands in between you and God. That you're not able to experience this love of God. His care. Go to Him. Because He loves you. And even when things that happens to our lives, we cannot understand. We cannot know. We, we don't know His ways. What the song says, trust His heart. If, we, if you don't know His purposes, His will, His dealings with you right now, that you question Him, just trust His heart. He loves you and He cares for you. He's doing something for 
great for you. Okay? And so, this will lead us to the second part. Because I love God. Anyway, this is a series. Now, and now I'll stop. And we'll continue this tonight. No, wherever asa kita. Uh, what's the real time? 10.31. Okay? Uh, I'll stop. No, and then we'll continue this uh, on the evening. And so... This is the expression of the love of God for us. He loves us so much. He cares for us. And so, we love Him because He first loved us. Then how, how do we show our love? Then, of course, we should reciprocate the love of God. Number one, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, Again, let's remember that in Titus. It's not our good works, but it is because of His mercy. It is because of His love for us that He saves us. And now, Apostle Paul is urging, beseeching, not really commending us because He's dealing with our decision. And it should be out of love. The Apostle Paul is saying, because the Lord loves you so much, then in return, I'm offering you how you can also show your love for Him. That's why He's just urging. He's not saying, I'm commanding you. Apostle Paul wants us to understand that it should be the activity of the heart. It should be from our heart. Heart. Okay? The mercies of God that you what? You present your bodies as a living sacrifice, a holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This means that we should surrender our lives to Him. The word present there is the same as offering or dedicate. Set apart, presenting or setting apart for him to use. That's why we're using this also in the case of the child. Now set apart, presented. The, 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 the same word that the word of God used when the Lord Jesus Christ was presented to the temple. You have to present it, you have to dedicate, you have to set this apart for the Lord to use you. And that is a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Many of us think of the things that we can do for the Lord, serving Him in the many ministries. But many times we fail. Why? Because we have not yet fully dedicated our lives. What is our reasonable service? It's when we dedicate our lives to Him. When we surrender our lives to Him. It's not what we can do for the Lord. But what He can do for us when we fully surrender our lives to Him. We always fail in our service for Him. It's because our service is self Centered. It's only when we dedicate our lives to Him. Okay? And then, not when we dedicate our lives to Him, set apart for Him to use. And in verse 2, not conform unto this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Why it's necessary for us to dedicate our lives to the Lord so and not transform our minds. Okay? Not conforming into this world, but be transformed. Okay? That you may prove. Proving. We cannot prove this good and acceptable and perfect will of God, if we will not surrender our lives to Him. We cannot. It's only when we surrender 
then we can say, yes, Lord. When we live our lives to Him, transforming, not conforming to the world and being transformed, then we will know. Then we will experience. How can we prove when we experience it? Have we experienced the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Amen. If we have proven it. But most probably we have not proven it. It's because what? We have not fully surrendered our lives to Him. And we are still conforming to the world and not transform our minds. Our minds will only be transformed when we spend time with His Word. Okay? So, when we do God's will in our lives, the same thing experience, no? Nindot yod. Good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The perfect love of God will result sa pag-impress and experience na to sa iyong perfect will sa atong kinabuhi. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 to 18. Let's remember this also. I, I just, no, passing lang because no, we'll study this. But 2 Corinthians 5 talks about Apostle Paul's ministry. And Someday, no, all of us will appear in the judgment seat of Christ. And Apostle Paul said in verse 11, Knowing therefore the terror of God, we persuade men. Have you ever tried to persuade men? Men most probably have persuaded women. Huh? With all those no, mga beautiful words. Muna nga, no? Nakapatubag. Okay? But in sharing the gospel and in our resolve, we should be persuasive. We should persuade men. And in verse 14, for the love of Christ, what? Constrains us. Okay? We will study that. In doing the ministry, it should be the love of Christ, not our love for Christ. We've been, we have studied the love of Christ. Its impact sa atong kinabuhi. Then it should be the motivation in serving Him. No? Ang gugma ni Cristo. And it tells, no, Apostle Paul continues that He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. As we reciprocate the love of God, then we should think that it's His love that would motivate us. The word compels, that is to move us, to keep us, no? to compel us, to move us, to keep us. No? It's a force that would result to action. And so, what is the driving force for us to serve the Lord? And to do the ministry of reconciliation, it is the love of Christ. Now, la later we'll study that deeper. Christ's gate love will move us to, to be passionate in doing our mission. Philippians 4, 15 to 16. Okay? Uh, now with Philippians, the beginning of the gospel, when I depart from Amazon, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you said once again unto my necessity, not because I desired gift, but I desired fruit that may abound in your account, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, and out, the odor of a sm sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Many times we claim this promise in verse 19 that God will supply our needs. But don't you know that this promise is attached to what? Mission work. As Apostle Paul commends them of their involvement in the mission through what? In giving. Supporting the mission. Okay? And this is what Apostle Paul, how did they give in 2 Corinthians 8? Moreover, brethren, we do to wit of the grace of God bestowed to the churches of Macedonia, that's including the church in Philippi. How that in great 
trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power a bare record, ye and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with such entity that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the mystery of the saints. And thus they did, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us of the will of God. The church in Philippi did not just give out of their abundance. They give even in their poverty. They give even in the poverty. Pupri na kayo sila that Apostle Paul said, No! Ayaw na! Kay, no? Ipalit nila na ninyo sa inyong mga pagkaon. You're so poor! But they give out of their liberality. Okay? So what's the thought of this? That we can involve in mission. In giving. Okay? Even in our poverty, we can. Okay? So Christ's great love will move us to be passionate in doing our mission even to the point that it hurts us. We still need to be passionate. Let's remember this. No? Ang gi commands ang gino. It should be all nations. It should be preach the gospel among all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And in Acts 1, 8, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. In our obedience to our mission, it should be a complete obedience. When our involvement in mission is just on this, our locality, and we are not involving in other areas, then it's partial obedience. In order for us to fully obey the Lord, then we should involve in all, in all of our Jerusalem, in all of our Judea, in all of our Samaria, and even to the uttermost part of the earth. And I believe this church is doing so. Our mission, for now, we're using it in uh, Bible clubs here in our Jerusalem. We have also our church plant in the whole of Cebu. We're also in the whole Philippines, and also we are supporting missionaries serving the Lord in other countries. That's why, as we apply the Word of God, continue in our involvement and mission. Most probably, you have not yet signed your paper, assigned the paper for mission. Do so. Even the children were encouraging, mga bata ninyo, teach them to give. Five, ten. In order for them to be involved in mission. And the more involvement in our mission, more pa ang mga opportunities of serving the Lord. And so that's the challenge for us this morning. Ang gugma sang ginoo nagrescue sa ato. And now, as we are blessed, then let's, let's reciprocate that love by dedicating our lives to Him, doing His will, and supporting His mission. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless His word that we'll be able to apply this in our own lives. Father in heaven, bless us and guide us, Lord, and sustain us with your grace that we'll be able to apply your very word into our lives. Have mercy on us, Lord. And thank you that as we involve ourselves in the mission, Lord, all this not being nothing, but you promised that you will take good care of us and not only our needs, but even you'll give more. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.